Looks like many of you guys are still unsure of your builds for Leagues 4. Well, my friends, you are in luck because this video will probably help you decide on a build. I will cover the different possible builds within the three different combat styles that will most likely make your Leagues 4 experience fun. Each style will have a few main routes, meaning different region combinations. For first-time League players, let me give you a quick rundown on the thought process behind the builds you will see momentarily. For veterans though, feel free to skip straight to the builds. Anyways, for you young grasshoppers, in Leagues 4, which combat style you focus on will play a massive role in any Trailblazer editions of League, as you will have to choose between three super powerful combat relics. There is one for melee, range, and magic. Essentially, there will be three classes to choose from, warrior, archer, and magician. So if you choose the warrior relic, for example, your melee will be ridiculously stronger than your range of magic. All three styles are similarly powerful. In addition to this, you have to decide between which three regions to unlock. In the Trailblazer edition of Leaks, you cannot access every area of RuneScape. You must decide three regions to focus on. Karamja and the area around Lumbridge is free, however. So how do you decide between which combat style relic to choose, and on top of that, which regions to unlock? In my experience of playing leagues, it's all about having fun. So how do you have fun in Trailblazer League specifically? For many players, it is about learning new content because it's easier in leagues as you're super overpowered. For others, it's about just trying out the most hyped theoretical builds. The last typical way of having fun is gathering league points for rewards or ranks. Since we don't know all the tasks, it is hard to say which builds are best for points, but I do know most of the best builds for learning new content like raids, and the best builds that are the most powerful for fun. Disclaimer, some builds are just beginner friendly while others require a more experienced player approach, so I'll put emphasis on that. Also, some builds are geared heavily towards certain equipment and PVM content, so I'll put heavy emphasis on that as well. There's also many new relics still being revealed leading up to the release on the 15th, of this month but i don't think it will change the overall builds in this video much as the combat relic you choose will most likely be the core relic that decides most things anyways let's start with the melee builds which means you'll be picking the brawler's resolve melee relic the most powerful melee build is going to be the Candoran ascarnia mauritania build this build is for more experienced players that intend to grind the scythe as their main weapon you will get Bandos or Torva armor through God Wars with BGS for defense reduction, Heidi and Prims through Kandarin, and then ultimately the Scythe from Raids 2. Alternatively, you can skip Kandarin, which will lose you Piety, but you can pick Desert Region instead so you can get the Fang. Fang is a nice in-between while going for the Scythe. The Scythe could take a bit of time to get. This build is also good for players wanting to learn Tob and Nightmare. This build is the overall most powerful melee build. The next melee build is for the general player, which is going to be Kandarin, Ascarnia, and Desert. This build focuses on the Osmontan Fang as your main weapon. You will get the Dragon Defender, Bandos, or Torva, and BGS through Ascarnia, Kandarin for Piety and Prims, and lastly, Desert for the Fang. This build is typically a lot quicker to achieve because the Fang is way more common than trying to get a Scythe in Tob, and Race 3 is also typically easier to learn than Tob. This build is also good for learning things such as Race 3 or God Wars. There is one other build that I absolutely do not recommend, but it could be really fun because it is super trollish looking, and that is the Din's Bulwark build, which is typically Kandarin, Zaya, and Mauritania. This build revolves around using the Din's Bulwark as your main weapon. This setup ideally works because you will get Justicia from Rage 2, which makes the Bulwark stronger because it's based on the fence, how strong it is. And you will get the Bulwark from Rage 1 and Zaya. Kandarin will also give you Piety for the extra power. But again, this build is not meant to be taken too seriously. It's pretty decent, but it's nowhere near as good as a Scythe build or the Fang build. But if you want to make people laugh, this is a good build. Now we're going to cover the range builds. The most powerful range build is going to be Arscarnia, Desert, and Zaya. This build is for more experienced players. Arscarnia lets you unlock the Armadale Crossbow, and if you're willing to go a bit further, you can grind next for the Zarya Crossbow. The Crossbow in this league are as fast as a normal game Blowpipe, which is 2 ticks, with the Range Relic, meaning it is super powerful. Desert lets you unlock Missouri to give you the best range armor. Zaya gives you the Rigor Prayer for the damage boost, and if you're lucky, the Twisted Bow. 
Just the bow is still the best ranged weapon for a good amount of bosses with high magic, such as a lot of the chambers bosses and next, but it is super rare. Luckily, the armadillo crossbow is very easy to get in leagues and will carry you just fine even if you don't get the twisted bow or even the Zarya crossbow. Also, Desert will give you Dragon Bolts through Leviathan, which will give you the best ammo. This build is good for learning about God Wars and Raids 1 and 2. This build does have one major issue, which is maintaining Dragon Bolts. You don't get an assembler to preserve your bolts, so you'll probably have to camp Adamant, Ruby, or Diamond Bolts for most of your PVMing. But you will save Dragon Bolts for harder bosses, like maybe Nax or Chambers or something. Alternatively, you can max all your stats to get the range cape effect on the max cape, but this is why... This build is not recommended for your average Joe. Definitely for more experienced players. The second most powerful range build is going to be the Arscania Desert and Frimnik build. This build is very similar to the first range build, except you don't have Zaya and it is more average player friendly. You only have to worry about doing one type of raid, which is arguably the easiest one, which is the Desert Raid 3. And you also gain the ability to get the Avis Assembler, which will save you a ton of bolts for your Armadillo or Zarya Crossbow. This means it's more realistic for you to spam Dragon Ruby or Diamond Bolts, which are significantly stronger than the Adamant versions. This build is very good for learning God Wars and Raids 3. You also get to try out some easier bosses like Muspa, DKs, Vorkath, and so on. The other range build is Elf City, Zaya, and Desert. I least recommend this one, generally speaking, because crossbows are actually stronger than the Fardenimbo, the Bofa, in leagues. Due to them being the same exact attack speed with the range relic, the only good thing about the Elf City is really the blowpipe, which becomes one take, the machine gun blowpipe. The machine gun blowpipe with Missouri is probably going to be the most powerful DPS for some bosses, but you cannot walk and attack, which might be really difficult for some of the harder bosses where moving is a must, so you'll lose DPS because of that. You do get Rigor from Raids 1 to improve your range even more, and a chance to twist the bow, which will kind of replace the loss in your crossbows. This build is ideal for people wanting to learn Gauntlet, Zora, and Raids 1, since the other builds do not provide things like Gauntlet. So I would really say if you're going for Gauntlet, this is probably the one. It is still a strong build, though. All three of these range builds, though, will have no issue helping you get through most of your PVM. Finally, we have the magic build. The magic build is probably the hardest one in general to pull off all the way. I only recommend this for more experienced players as you will be considerably weaker than range of melee builds until you get a shadow from race 3. The first magic build is Kandoran Desert and Zaya. This build gives you a warp scepter and a trident. Because magic is just so much weaker than range and melee in the normal game, you're effectively going to be doing normal game DPS until you get the Mage Relic, which will take some time. So the Dragon Skin Guitar from Kandoran is actually quite uh, important to talk about here. For a while, you will be maining the Trident until you grind out a Shadow from Raids 3. Unlocking Desert also gets you Ancient Magics, which is nice for speed training. And also for some specific bossing situations like the Monkey Room in the Raids 3. You also get Augury and Ancestral from Raids 1. Once Shadow is unlocked, you basically have the strongest overall build in the entire leagues, but the path to it is considerably more challenging than the other builds. Trident is just way worse than something like people mailing with a whip or using range with a crossbow with their respective relics. This build is for people interested in challenging themselves more than it is to learn new content, to be very honest. And we have one other mage build, which is also very similar, but it is Kandoran Desert and Fremenic. This build once again relies on getting a shadow to obtain golly power and Kandoran to help you start off, but it drops the rates one commitment and instead lets you grind easier bosses in Fremenic area like Duke Succulus for the magic ring. You also can grind out a boss like Leviathan, most likely for Virtus armor since you're not going to get ancestral. This build is a bit easier than the first build and achieves about the same power. This build is still challenging compared to range of melee builds. So once again, still for people that want to challenge more experienced players. Anyways, that is it. I might have missed some other builds, but these are probably the best overall ones. If you're a casual player, again, you're going to lean towards more range and melee. So focus more on that. Anyways, feel free to leave questions in the comments or even ask me on Twitch because I love talking to y'all and I will be streaming leagues a lot on twitch.tv slash rice link in the description. I will be very happy to provide further assistance. 
anyways enjoy your leaks journey i hope this video helped to make your decision for which build see ya